All right, so welcome back to part seven of today's lecture series on the natural world. Um, and I'm going to sort of try and draw things together um, and continue talking about Aplantis, but from a little bit of a perspective of thinking about social class and the experience of the natural world, um, drawing together the ideas that we discussed last week a little bit about how social class could be a conditioning factor for the viewing experience of someone um, in the ancient Roman visual environment and thinking about how that might play out in Philip a and in other spaces where there's a great deal of exposure to the natural environment uh, built into the aesthetic environment of the space. So one way to approach um, thinking about the views of non-elites in these sort of elite domestic spaces uh, is to think about circulation routes. And so this figure here is from um, a 2014 book written by Sandra Jo Schall and Laura Hackworth, Lauren Hackworth Peterson, um, two scholars who work a lot on um, the viewing perspective and the sort of um, daily life of slaves in these villa spaces, in these rich decorative environments. Um, um, so in this diagram, they have mapped out some of the common service routes from the uh, slave areas like the kitchen suite over here to the west, uh, the service peristyle 32 that we talked about before, and some of the sort of back corridors that are painted in that zebra stripe service signal pattern possibly. Um, so they've mapped out some of the common routes from getting from service areas to the sort of elite representative spaces, areas of um, uh, entertainment and sort of um, the practice of the um, otium that the patron class of the villas would be engaging in socially when in this space. So you can see that in many cases, um, the slave routes that are mapped out here kind of avoid some of the rooms of representation, so kind of hide the activity of the servant class from the view of the elites and also from these extended gazes of the masterly gaze that we've seen that cut across different natural landscapes and draw the environment together for a pleasing variety, visual variety for the patron at heart. Um, but that is not always the case. If we look more closely here at room four, um, which is right on the middle of this elongated north garden south facade access, um, we can see that it picks up just along the border of the exterior walls of this room um, on that zebra stripe pattern. Um, these two hallways reach around the viridarium, this interior garden at the center, um, and provide a circulation route to get to the north garden and room 21, that important reception space on the other side of the garden. Behind us, um, from our perspective here, would be the kitchen areas, and then to our right uh, would be the atrium, so another one of these really important um, rooms of representation with uh, antiquated decoration in the second style that is extremely fancy um, and high class and worth preserving over time. There's evidence that it was repainted to keep it fresh looking over time. Um, but this is also right between the service peristyle area over here and the kitchen, so it's on a slave circulation route, which would actually render any service happening in this area very visible, um, save from the atrium room next door. Um, and another thing to think about here in this space is that here is a permanently exposed room to the outdoors. So the atrium itself, um, right to our right where the wall hits here that you can't see past, you can't see in this image, um, could be closed off via folding doors from room four. Um, so this line right here could be enclosed from the outdoors, although the open roof would of course remain. Um, however, room four is permanently exposed to the garden. So in a terrible storm, uh, at night, if it was very cold, uh, a slave trying to get to slave peristyle um, 32 from the kitchen area would still be exposed to the outdoor air and have sort of less control over um, different levels of uh, enclosure, um, temporary levels of enclosure as well, than someone who is more elite would have over their environment, right? The ability to instruct somebody to close the windows, close the shades, draw the curtains, um, shut the doors in, and sort of um, cocoon into the space if the weather, for example, is particularly bad, um, maybe is not open to the slave class in the way that it is to the elites of the household. Um, so it, I think it does seem to show some interesting um, class disparities both in 
access over time to sort of dwelling in the center area, right? You want to be maybe moving through room four and the atrium area rather than hanging out in it unless you're working there. Um, but you are sort of more on display at times sometimes than others. Um, there are occasions at which the having a sort of robust um, service apparatus is worth showing off to your friends if you're a member of the elite. Um, so there's always a sort of balance at play here in this villa between interior and exterior space, um, who is allowed to move where, um, and thinking about the sort of um, grander versus humbler paths that lead to the same place. Um, in many cases, something that is more enclosed is going to be closer to the humbler scale. So among the most enclosed spaces that we have in this villa are the kitchen areas and these latrines up here, for example, um, versus these elongated porticos with splendid views out towards the water that we see at the southern end. Um, that are very exposed to the outdoors, um, take advantage of the resources of the landscape and the beauty of the natural landscape around, um, and also sort of um, highlight and mold certain aspects of the landscape um, to um, help with the decoration of the space. So we have a, a lot of different layers going on and a lot of opportunity for different perspectives to read these spaces in different ways, right? Are you forced to be in the outdoors or are you um, a grandmaster at the center with the ability to shut the windows if you like? Um, are you someone who is quickly passing by on your way um, to meet a guest or are you somebody who is cleaning a room, spending a lot of time in a space, really um, perhaps washing uh, the walls down uh, and spending a lot of time with the detail of the imagery because you are required to spend your time, your workspace, your work time in that area. Um, so I just sort of want you to take time at the end of today's class and think through some of the operations in the pump hand house that you've chosen um, that might sort of play on relationships with the outdoors, also relationships with social class and the role of different um, people within the house. Um, maybe think about some of the gender divides we've talked about, the roles of men and women in society, how those ideas might play out, um, but sort of to think about interlocking perspectives and, and the way that um, class, uh, work, occupation, social status, wealth, all of these things play into the creation of a visual sphere also with respect to the relationship between the natural world as it is um, evoked through art and architecture in space and also as it is represented in the decorative sphere. Um, so with that I just want to give you your final little assignment. This is a bit of a short lecture, um, but under what circumstances might, say, a slave or some other perspective that is non-elite um, view the image that you described in parts two to three of your work for today? And then under what circumstances might a villa owner or someone else who is a part of the elite um, view the same image? And then in what ways might the viewing experience of these two opposite ends of the social spectrum differ, um, especially with respect to how they might evoke a certain kind of relationship with the natural world. Um, would a, a slave who has come from uh, Germania um, be as familiar with uh, Hellenizing art as uh, one from Greece? You know, you can think sort of down onto various levels as deep as you would like to go. Um, but I just want you to sort of start playing with differing perspectives um, on these spaces and how um, something like the natural world that seems really sort of just there as background actually plays a really important role um, in, in expressing social differences in the visual realm in the Roman period. Uh, thank you very much. I will see you next week. Um, and I'm really enjoying reading your assignments. So thank you so much for the work that you put into those. They're fascinating. Um, have a lovely week and stay safe out there.